Hi, I'm Eric Siegel and welcome to volume 11 of Eric's Trains Express. So what I want to do today is show you some records that I picked up recently and these are records that contain train sounds. Now for you kiddies out there, you may not know what a record is or if you do, you may not have ever listened to one. But for many decades, this was how people listened to music or sounds. Now, eventually, records were supplanted by cassettes and then later CDs and then later the kind of digital music like we have today. But before all that, this was how people listened to music. And if you've never listened to a record before, you should give it a try because it's a very unique experience and it really has a charm that can't be matched. And for that reason, vinyl has actually made a comeback in recent years. Now, of course, it's never going to surpass digital because digital is way more convenient and portable, but it has made a comeback because people have realized that it has a charm to it and it has a warmth to it that you really can't get with digital. So if you haven't done it, give it a try. Now, I could go on for hours about the history of records and recorded music because it's kind of a side hobby of mine, but I'm not gonna do that. That's a video for a different day and probably for a different channel altogether. But suffice to say, over the last five or six years, I've built up a collection of vinyl, getting some of my favorite albums on vinyl and so forth. And so a few weeks ago, I thought, you know, it'd be cool to get some train sounds on vinyl. I shouldn't say vinyl because not all records are vinyl. New records are, but they weren't always made of vinyl. So. Vinyl is kind of a generality, so forgive me if you're an audiophile. But I thought it'd be cool to get some train sounds on vinyl, and so I went on eBay and I picked up these three records, and I got them for just a few bucks. Clearly, records of train sounds don't command a high price because it's not like it's a first pressing of Sgt. Peppers or something. So these are very inexpensive. And so what I wanna to do today is just show you each of these records, and then at the end of the video, I'll play you a clip from one of these records, and hopefully you'll find it enjoyable. All right, so here's the first record, and what we've got here is the Columbian Limited, put out by Columbia Records, of course, Real Train Sounds. Now this is kinda cool, right here, it says, this record can be used as realistic live background sounds for model and toy trains, or enjoyed for the pleasant excitement train sounds can give. Now, this record was made in 1951, which was right in the middle of the post-war heyday for Lionel. Lionel was busy making some of the most famous trains they would ever make at this time, and so it's not surprising that they would mention model and toy trains on a record of train sounds, especially one that was geared towards kids. And this one clearly was because on the back, it's got advertisements for other children's records. Now, one interesting thing about this record is that it is a 10 inch record rather than a 12 inch vinyl record like you see today. For a period of time, 10 inch records were very popular all the way up really until sometime in the 1950s, early 60s. These were very popular for quite a while. They operated at 78 RPMs rather than the 33 and a third RPMs that 12 inch vinyl operates at. And one of the downsides of 10 inch records was that they had very limited playtime. This record only gets three minutes per side. So it has a total runtime of six minutes. And what's on this record is the journey of two kids, a boy and a girl, getting on a train called the Columbian Limited and riding it from start to finish. It's pretty cool. Now right here, you'll see it says Columbia Non-Breakable. What that's about is that for a while, records had a problem. Early records were made of shellac and some other materials. And while the shellac records were very good in terms of resistance to scratching and needle damage, they were very brittle. And so if you drop them, they would shatter. So for years and years, they tried to come up with formulas to make them more durable. And so this was one of those attempts. Now, eventually, of course, they went to vinyl records like we have today. And the vinyl records, they're very durable in terms of not breaking when you drop them, but that does come at a cost because the vinyl records are much more susceptible to scratching and warpage, but hey, at least they don't break when you drop them. So yeah, this is pretty cool. Little slice of 1951 here, and again, a total of six minutes playing time. Up next, we've got a farewell to steam. The steam locomotive's last run on the ATSF. Now, I'm not sure what year this was recorded because it's not printed anywhere on the record, 
But if I had to guess, it was probably sometime in the mid to late 1950s. But what's cool about this is that the engine that is featured prominently on this record is Santa Fe 3759. And I've actually got a model of this engine in my collection that's made by Lionel. It's actually one of my favorite engines. And so on this record, you can hear 3759 going from LA to San Bernardino, and then from San Bernardino to Barstow. And then they've also got the sounds of Southern Pacific trains at Santa Barbara. And then they've got lots of info on the locomotives and the trains and so forth. It's pretty cool. And unlike the previous record, this one is actually a 12 inch vinyl record, which means you get about 22 minutes or so per side. It's unnarrated, so it is just raw train sounds. And what's interesting is that it was recorded in stereo. So when the trains go by, you can actually hear them moving from one speaker to the other. Here we have the third and final record, and this one is actually my favorite of the three. This one's called Highball, a collection of nostalgic railroad sounds narrated by Jim Amechi. This was recorded around 1959 or so, and it really has it all. It's got UP Northern number 809 near Sherman, Wyoming. It's got Sierra Railroad number 28 near Chinese Camp, California. How politically incorrect is that? Chinese Camp, California. They've got Great Westerns number 90 famed Decapod in the snow country of Colorado. They've got Southern Pacific's Northern number 4460 on her last run. They've got Great Westerns number 75 leaving Loveland, Colorado. They've got the UP Challenger climbing Sherman Hill in Wyoming. And then last but not least, they've got the big boy westbound at MK Wyoming. So this is really sort of a greatest hits. It's narrated by this Jim Amechi guy. It's a really good listen. And just like the last record, this is a 12 inch vinyl. It's in really good shape. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use some of these train sounds from these records in some future Eric's Trains videos. Hopefully that will happen really soon. So keep an eye out for that. But what I'm gonna do today is end this video with a clip from this highball record. I hope you enjoy it. That's it for now. I'm Eric Siegel and I'll see you next time. Union Pacific, noted for its unusual and versatile array of motive power, also built the largest steam locomotive in the world. When American Locomotive Company rolled the first 4,000 class, 4884 off the assembly line, only one name could be labeled on this giant, Big Boy. Extra West 4002 is ready to leave Cheyenne, Wyoming, bound for Laramie. We strongly recommend that you stand back when playing this track.